What's going on, y'all? So, so we are back. We are back. We are back for another episode review of How to Get Away with Murder. And you guys, this was a good episode. Um, we seen an old face, okay? Miss Hartgrove, aka Soraya, aka that bitch that turned on fucking Annalise when we thought they was gonna get together. Okay, you know, um, Annalise is really on this kick. This is episode seven, season four. Um, was she ever good at her job? I said, girl, Tegan, you fucking st Sting, you tried it. Okay, but you know, Annalise, you know, I don't. I feel a way when they always make Annalise come back and she downtrodden, looking like she weak as fuck. You know, she just looks all type of, um, you know, out and 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 destitute and need. My hair needs to be twisted up again. Can't wait to go to the show and get it done. But anyway, she just looks all type of weak to me. And I hate when they do that. I know they gonna build her up. But I just hate when she come back. Because I just love it when she be the boss bitch, okay? For two straight seasons, she came back, you know, hitting them hard as fuck. Now, two straight seasons, she's coming back weakened to be built back up. To be weakened again. I can't stand that shit. But alright, we gonna roll with it. So... Last week, she said she was going to um, file a class law, uh, action lawsuit against the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that is exactly what she doing. Now, girl, I thought she was all talk, but Annalise is for real this time. I said, oh, for real? Okay. Um, we see Michaela and Asher in class, and they're not paying attention, even though they're being called on to, you know, answer questions and stuff. Michaela is looking at stuff. Um internship well ash is looking at internships for different law firms and they're all filled up and you know michaela is in looking into stuff about um this west situation for uh, uh laurel let me just say this laurel can go okay i'm tired of laurel laurel is getting on my nerves like and michaela you really aren't smart okay you are a smart book smart bitch but you know you really not socially smart because i would have thought about all this stuff you putting yourself in danger all right you putting all this i know you know you doing this shit for laurel she pregnant as fuck and it's so called for west and all this shit but what exactly is laurel doing for you laurel is sitting on her ass fucking frank that's what she doing right now being obsessive with this stuff she doodling and you know writing out the name of the company you know i i just don't I don't like Laurel. I really don't. Okay. Somebody said, I don't know why people be going in on Laurel. What about Oliver and Connor? Them two bitches can go too. Y'all know they stress me. I'll be like, when they scenes come on, I'll be like, oh, whatever. Think speaking of them, you know, um, the dads is in town. Okay. Connor don't want to fuck with the daddy because what it all boils down to, I'm just going to get right to it. He's avoiding them. When he finally meets up with them, um, Oliver, he telling Oliver that Ted, which is uh, his dad's partner, you know, was the one, I guess it's almost as if he's the one that turned him out or he's in it for the money. He's back here, not because he cares about uh, um, Connor, but he wants the tuition money back. That's what he wants. Um, you know, so I guess he's trying to turn everybody against Ted and make them hate him or dislike him or whatever. Uh... Ted is having secret conversations with Oliver. Oliver meets up with the parents and, you know, they're just, he's telling them a story about how when Connor came out when he was 12 years old, then a week later, the dad had got encouragement from him, from him coming out at 12. The dad came out at 40 something the week later and all that shit. He just wish he could go back and do it a little bit better and quicker and stuff like that. I was like, okay, whatever. That's cool. Um, Connor is masking whatever pain that he has with trying to fuck Oliver all the time. Uh, Oliver brings the parents back to the house. Oliver uh, walks in on Connor with his dick out, you know, and he's embarrassed. But later on, the father does try to talk to him. The father don't want the money, okay? The father does not want the money. Long story short, the father wants Oliver out the picture. He does not think that Oliver is the person for him. And it's not necessarily because he's positive um, with HIV. It's just that he don't feel like he's the right fit for him. I was like, that's kind of fucked up. But that's that dilemma, okay? Who cares? He doesn't care about the money. He just don't think Oliver is the one for him. I said, oh, okay. Like I said, Laurel out here still... 
messing with Michaela. Michaela is getting deeper and deeper into this web of bullshit. And it's going to be so deep that somebody going to get killed up in their office. And I want to know who the fuck it is, okay? I had to just go ahead and skip to that. Um, At the end of the episode, when they do that one and a half months um, after we see Michaela crying to um, um Isaac, Boa, Roa, and then they go and we see um Bonnie talking about something. I need to talk to the witness. And they're in fucking, um, the, what is it? Goblin and gold? Cabling and gold. Bitch, they up in the law firm, okay? And in the fucking office, it's blood stains. And they go, Oliver, look like somebody got shot in the head or something the way the blood splatter was. I'm like, what the fuck just happened up in here? First of all, we seen blood splatter at Annalise's place. Who? So two people got killed? Two people got killed, got shot, got hurt, or multiple people? Like, girl, I don't even fucking know. Um... It, it it was just a lie, so I was just taking it back. And the whole time, I'm thinking, it better not be bad bitch Tegan. Tegan motherfucking Price. That is a bad bitch name right there, okay? I was like, mm. you know, I like her. I really like her. I love, I gravitate. I found myself gravitating to strong black women. Like, really, when they on TV, I root for them so hard. Like, come on. This is why I want Annalise to come the fuck back, bitch. She trying. But motherfuckers keep testing her, and I really want her to snap the fuck off. Y'all really trying to make her go back. But anyway, Annalise in this class action lawsuit. Well, let me just get back to Laura. Laura was up here fucking Frank. She's supposed to be at the office with, um, you know, Bonnie. Denver finds out that she's working there. Denver is fucking over it. But, you know, to get back, Bonnie really wants to get back at Annalise. And I don't know if she knows about the class action lawsuit that Annalise is trying to do, but she wants to um, get ahead of it and try to, you know, look up some of the cases that Virginia, the head of the um, civil defense, um, you know, public defense office that <laughs> Annalise chewed out last week, try to get ahead of her. That's what she's trying to do. Um, you know, look back at her cases and seeing if it's anything that's fucked up. And, you know, we've seen in one particular case, a file was missing um, Frank, not Frank, but Nate, he's looking for the stuff and in the process, you know, Annalise is also looking into all of her cases too. That lady told Annalise, she said, I need to have a copy of every case file that, um, Anna, uh, Virginia has ever done. Bitch, she told her it's $2 per page to be copied. So that's, you looking at about 20 to 30 grand. I said, what? Hmm. Let me do some math. So let's say it's about in the range of let's say twenty five thousand dollars. No, I'm gonna make that shit an even number. Well, what the fuck ever. Twenty five thousand dollars divided by two dollars, bitch. That's twelve thousand five hundred fucking pages. The fuck and who finna to, um do this? Who finna print this shit out? Not the fuck me. And at least said. Well, damn, bitch, can you just give me the first page, you know, with the defendant names on there and all that stuff of each one? Oh, girl said that's still going to come out to like $2,000. So I said, shit, that's still a lot of money, but that's better than twenty. okay? So Annalise was like, fuck, the whole thing is she got to get money. Now, when she was asking about this, she was about to go to her therapy session. And when she on the phone, Nate is at the same lady's office, her desk, you know, and she was like, so both of y'all asking for the same thing? I'm not about to get involved in whatever it is you two trying to do. Nate was like, that was Annalise. What she want? They thinking, you know, Nate thinking something is up her sleeve and um, not realizing that they're basically on the same page. So y'all might as well team up together at this point. And it's understandable that Nate still has these, you know, dismissive feelings about um, Annalise because of how he was treated in the past, you know. Um, but... He's not working with her. She's not working with him. They're on the same path, but two separate agendas. There you go. And so she goes to her um, therapist's office and, you know, she's talking to him about the class action lawsuit, about what's going on. And she was like, he said, um, you feel like you're compensating for something. You're doing this to compensate for the death of um, someone that you knew, someone that's close to you. And was like, you think I'm doing this for Jasmine? And you damn right I'm doing this for Jasmine because Jasmine is like every other people who was out there who was wrongly accused and, you know, was fucked over and all this stuff. And he was like, no, I'm not talking about Jasmine. It was like, and start reading a transcript 
from what Annalise said about West and how close she was to him and how he committed suicide, which was a lie, and all this stuff in the home. And I said, oh, shit. And I said, come to think of it, maybe. Annalise just needs to keep busy. In her mind, I guess she's doing this for the greater good, but she's also, she compensates. She needs to keep busy. She, I don't feel like she has truly grieved. West death, okay, and I honestly don't feel like none of them have truly grieved it. And you know, even Michaela and them, they try to act like they don't care or they care, but not as much. You know, it's not really affecting them, everything is affecting them, okay. And they just need to take a step back for a second and breathe the fuck in and then blow that shit out, all right. Of course, Annalise gets in her feelings over it. Um, Isaac is trying to say he's not trying to offend. Later on, we see him talking in his little, um, you know, recorder about how Annalise is feeling and, you know, told her about he sends in a disciplinary action um, probation update each month about her, you know, progress report, basically. And he was saying how when she started speaking about West, the way that she reacted, and also he has a personal interest in it, too, because West is a trigger for him. And I don't know if he meant the way that he died or something else, bitch, because I was like, explain, explain to me how Wes is a trigger for you. I'm confused, bro. I guess we're going to figure that out. Okay. Did you have a similar experience? What is going on? Bitch, was I the only one who thought he was about to say, cause that's his son. Cause that's his son. Bitch. I was like, wait a minute. I thought we already said my homie was his son, but he got another daddy. What's going on? I swear to God, you just never know with this show. Okay. You never know. But, um, Back to Annalise, Annalise needs money. So the way that she's going to get money is she's going to go swallow her pride, go back to um, President Hargrove of Middleton University, where she used to work at, um, and, and try to get on her case. At first, you know, uh, Hargrove was acting as if, you know, you I can't let you back on. The board ain't going to let you back on, and they're not going to do this and do that. She was like, girl, I ain't trying to hit all that shit. That's not what I'm here for. You going through your divorce, I see. Put me on your counsel. You know, she was like, we already settled that. I'm giving him that. I'm doing this. She was like, no, what it sounds like is that you settled and you're probably giving him more than what he deserved. Put me on your team. And if I can get, you know, you less, give, uh, make the settlement a little bit less than what you have to give him, then you can pay me and we can call it even. You know, if I can't, we can just build a truce right then and there. Okay. And so she was like, fuck it, fine. Come to find out that her other lawyer, her main lawyer, is at Kevlin and Go. Okay, where Michaela is at, where Miss Tegan Price at, and it's Miss Tegan Price. I said, uh oh, now she's gonna be co canceled. Now, at first, Michaela didn't know, and Tegan didn't know that Michaela was a student, once a student of Annalise. So when she see them in there in the office, they're talking to the client. It's throwing Tegan off a little bit because, you know, um, Annalise is interjects and saying, don't talk to my client this way. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, he's trying to get $6 million out of a $10 million network that she has that she came up with herself from her previous employment. And she was like, bitch, that's why the fuck we signed a prenup. I was like, yeah, that was before this bitch was out here endangering the kids, being drunk and stuff, you know, in front of the kids. There was, um... Um, video recordings of her throwing up in the toilet and doing all this stuff. I said, that's some fuck shit. Now, at first they wanted to go and do, uh, get the tape thrown out and sue him for recording her because he recorded her illegally, but they were spouses at the time and, you know, shit happens. Some way that they flipped that, but, um, they was going about it and it was cool for the most part. <sighs> Michaela, Michaela irks my nerves. Michaela irks my nerves because you come in and you acting like you really wanted to be, you put yourself in this position. You wanted to be under and be taught by Annalise Keaton. Let's for, not forget that. She did not saw, she didn't seek you out. You saw her out, okay? And you just so happened to get a spot in her class. And you just so happened to help participate in killing and burying and, you know, hiding all this evidence about this murder with her husband. She didn't tell y'all to do none of this shit. And that is the thing that irks me the most about these ungrateful ass bastard ass kids, okay? Because 
Annalise didn't tell them to do a damn thing. Annalise been covering up their tracks since the fucking beginning, okay? She's been, yeah, you get into trouble, but she takes the heat for it. Ain't none of them went to jail. Ain't none of them been called to do this, to do that, to even spend one night in a jail cell. Um, nothing. You still got your privilege to be in school, but yeah, Annalise is taking a brunt of it. Annalise was accused of murder. Annalise, and she didn't even fucking murder nobody. And Elise was up in the fucking jail cell getting her ass beat the fuck up and her wig snatched. And y'all sitting there, uh, failing in school on your own lonesome. Okay? But yet you were still in school. You still in school now. You still able to get internships at the best fucking law firm. But yet you still an ungrateful ass little bitch. All right? And Elise wasn't even checking for your ass. So you had to go up there and, and say some shit after, you know, um... She was like, this is Barry's uh, phone number and all this stuff. You know, you need to play ball and all this shit. Because I guess she realized that um, <laughs> at this, she got the, uh, gave her the email address. Then Annalise was typing before her therapy session. She was typing up this um, letter or whatever, talking about the settlement, talking about the case with President Hawkgrove. And she was supposed to send it to Barry Thompson, the email address. And they made sure to pan the camera down on the sticky note that was on her computer with the man's email address. And then when we see her actually send the email, she typed in the B and automatically there was Barry Luce Lewinstein. He is from the university, the board president or whatever. She sent the email to the wrong person. They had to hurry up and bring her back in there. And, you know, they was going off about that. Um, she made a mistake. So, Tegan is talking to her, like, talking to Michaela, like, well, damn, was she ever good at her job? You know, why was y'all looking at each other like this? Because, you know, this when she found out that, you know, she was once a student. And she was like, um, I never said anything about her because I hate her. You know, and if you want me to dismiss myself from the case, I can. Tegan was like, no, because you think I like everybody up in this office? Half the motherfuckers up in this office I hate, okay? But that don't mean that I ain't gonna work with their asses. You wanna know why? I come up in this bitch because I'm a fucking boss bitch. I said... That did something to my spirit. I said, oh, just the way she said it. Tegan, what's up? <laughs> but anyway, you know, she was like, so you got to suck that shit up, swallow it, and go through with it. I said, tell her what she needs to hear. And she did, bitch. And so when all this stuff happened and um, she found out the mistake, Annalise is in there talking to... um you know, her client, her, Miss Hargrove, and she's trying to, you know, soothe the situation, but she knows that she fucked up, and old girl is just venting. Mind you, Tegan out there talking about some, are you sure she was ever good at her job? You know, this little small ass case and all this shit. And then McKenna was like, well, she has been through some stuff. Now, see, listen, McKenna, you need to understand and figure out which side of the fence you're going to be on. you going to hate the bitch or you going to take up for the bitch. Like, if you're going to hate the bitch, 100% hate the bitch. Because once she said some shit like that, you should have been like, what? I mean, you see what the fuck going on. I will, you know, you completely turn. But, you know, she still likes Annalise, even though she tried to fucking mask it. That's what's going on with Michaela. It's an eternal conflict, you know. She's redirecting her hate, and it's just it's just a mess. Like I said, I guess she just part of her grieving process. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> she was saying all this stuff. <laughs> when she talked to uh, when they first left, she was like, here's the email and all this shit because Annalise had came up there and asked Tegan because she gone ahead and look at the um the the, the the settlement or whatever, first draft. And she was like, bitch, so I can do it for you on something that I don't agree with? Do you think I should do this? Michaela said no. And then when she was leaving and she was giving her that email address, it was like, you can tell um Tegan she can do this and she can do this. I'm not going to take orders from her. And you can tell her to kiss my ass and tell her those words directly. McKayla gonna say something. I know this is awkward, but um, we need to swallow our pride and just get over with. Bitch, McKayla, um, Annalise said, girl, you need to get the fuck up off my elevator. Okay, you tried to stand up to Annalise, and Annalise still hold the power because that bitch showed the fuck enough, stepped the fuck back, and looked scared as shit. I said, you know what Annalise is capable of, bitch, so you better shut the hell up, McKayla. Stop trying it. I know you trying to put your big girl panties on, but this ain't the moment. Okay, this ain't the way I should say, you know, calm that down. But, um, anyway, back to this part when the, uh, mistake happened, um, Tegan was like, 
Well, I mean, you know, that's okay. You you work with her. You it's it's understandable. Whatever. I mean, she's still hot as hell. I give her that. I said, take it. You know, women can compliment women on how they look, and it don't got to be no gay shit. But in my mind, given that this is Shonda, and it's just about some gay shit, and just about every one of her shows. My man automatically went to some gay shit. And I was very much here for it. Because I can picture that. That would be a power-ass lesbian couple triangle. Because I'm pretty sure there's something still going on with the president. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say. The shit was still there. And the tension came back up this time. I was like, are y'all going to fuck? Okay? Is you really going to let her hit? You know, somebody going to get... And at least she needs some sex. And at least ain't been fucked this whole season. I mean, we only on episode four. She ain't been fucked this whole season. Y'all know how she get down. She just like Olivia Pope. That bitch a fuck in a minute, okay? Like, girl, we are in the middle of a crisis, and she's still going to get that p- pussy trend. Like, it's just, it's just, it just happens, you know? So maybe she just needs to bust one out with somebody else and not just herself. Okay? But um, anyway, all that happened, the president going off on her, and she was like, these are my kids, and she hit, she struck a nerve, and this is where Annalise started softening up. She was already apologetic because she knew she messed up, and when she said, these are my kids, you don't have kids, you don't know what it feels like to tr- almost lose your kids. I said, yeah, I mean, she had a baby, and she lost it, so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, does that count? Mm-hmm. You know, but, um... At one point, Annalise said, just let me make it up, okay? I will make it up to you. Um, The reason why I wasn't here for an hour is because I was at therapy. You know, it's court mandated. It's doing good. It's doing well. And at this point, this is when the president start softening up. And they start, um, you know, connecting and all this stuff. And she sued over the situation. I was like, oh, this is cute. It's something still there. I just want them to be gay for a second. I really do. I'm sorry. You know, maybe that's my agenda, but you know, they always say it's a gay agenda. Let me shut the fuck up. Moving on from that. Um, <laughs> so with all that happening, um, mind you, Annalise said, fuck doing this modern technology stuff. I'm recording my notes on a regular recorder. Okay. Not no phone where you can hack this. Cause at the beginning she was like, hack this bitch. I said, I know. I know, because they tried you. Bonnie trying the life out of me. She up there uh, going after Denver, basically telling him, you know, you need to get a jump on these uh, things because I'm pretty sure um, Annalise trying to do some stuff. And he was like, why is Michaela here? Not Michaela, but uh, Laurel here. Fire her ass. He was like, no, I'm not going to fire her because she's pregnant and you trying to run for office and you don't want to start your um, campaign off with a, a, a lawsuit. Clash ass and lawsuit. So... That's not going to happen. She's going to stay and you're going to fucking deal with it. And so Laura was upset because he's running for office and she feels as though he had something to do with her, um, with West death also. And which we all thought, we all thought at one point that he did it last season. And she connected dots and told, um, Michaela about how, uh, she thinks her father was paying him. Cause another person that was working on, um, her father's company ended up dead. I think the Terry guy and some other person, they said, this is Denver. It has to be. And she, he was paying him to do all this stuff. So, you know, they trying to do all, uh, connect the dots on everything. And Michaela is just falling deeper and deeper into it. And I said, girl, you need to get up out this black hole. Okay. Uh, Frank popping up on Annalise with the suitcase of money. She said, bitch, that's the death of my baby. That's what caused the death of my baby. You need to get the fuck out of here with that shit. Are you serious? <laughs> Frank, I, I agree with Rox. Rox said the um it just make him look pathetic and desperate to keep on trying to, you know, like Annalise is the end all or be all of it. You know, just just fucking let it go. So Annalise was doing some stuff with her um, I don't know what triggered her. She was either with the therapist. And she seen his note or whatever um, about her disciplinary action and her progress report or whatever. And so she got an idea and said, we need to subpoena Miss um, Hargrove's husband's notes and stuff like that. And it was like, okay, fine. They go through the stuff. They find the fact that he was so-called having an affair with somebody named Sue. She said she knew who Sue was. Come to find out this motherfucker, Sue was the account manager, Sue, H-U-S, you know, um, HSU, I think, or HSX, whichever one, Asian, um, he 
was basically moving his money. So he was trying to have his asset, assets. And so this is a federal offense. And therefore, if you don't want to go to jail, you will agree to joint custody and only $1 million in settlement so that you can be able to take care of the kids. And so Annalise came the fuck on through. And, um, you know, everything is all to the good. I was like, all right, you know, this is cute. And so Annalise and Michaela had another run in and she was trying to say some stuff to Annalise. And Annalise said, bitch, let me tell you something. Here you go, doing it again. She was like, because she was trying to put her foot down, make let it known, be known that she up here working with, um, you know, Tegan, and she doing good here, and she a better teacher. She done found a better mentor than you will ever be in all this shit. Annalise had said, bitch, you doing it. This is what you do. Classic fucking Michaela. You come under me looking for a mommy. Now you go over there to her looking for a mama too. Okay, you can't switch the shit up. Had a Michaela standing there looking stupid as fuck again. I said, girl, why do you even try? You know this bitch and you know how she is with words and she know you know how simple it is for she to put you in your place. So just just shut the fuck up and go sit down, okay? Um she get access to some emails and she thought that she was gonna get access to uh Tegan's emails or whatever to go into her case files and stuff like that. But the dude said, no, girl, because you only an intern, so you ain't got that privilege. She got to, you know, give you that access herself. And so this is how Oliver comes into fold. And they're going to call Oliver up there to do a job and I guess to hack into her systems and stuff like that. I said, I really ain't got time for it, okay? Oliver is forever put made to do stuff, but... <laughs> They act like he in the back burner and shit. They really just put him on standby. And at this point, I think, you know, Nate is kind of softening up to Annalise just a little bit. But Nate is irking me and he can still fucking go too, you know. So that's what's what. Um, While at the very end of the episode, I already said what was happening in the one and a half months, you know, prior. Well, one and a half months later. You know, the blood being at the a law, law, law office and Oliver being there as the witness. Back in this backtracking, we see um, Isaac on talking and he, when he was talking about Wes is a trigger, this case is a trigger for him and all this stuff. He sees his light in his office go off and he was like, okay, he has another client. His another um, patient is coming in. Bitch, why is it Bonnie and why is she saying that her name is Julie Barton? I said, oh... Oh, so we playing games up in here too? You know, Bonnie is fucking hurt. Bonnie is hurt and she is trying to destroy Annalise, I feel like. And I don't know. I don't think she playing games. I really think that the bitch is pissed off. <laughs> I think she about to snap. But if I missed anything, I know I was jumping around. Um, The episode was good as fuck. If I missed anything, let's just put it down in the comment. Let's discuss. Am I reaching? Because I just want the shit to happen about the little chemistry between Tegan, between um, Hot Grove and Annalise and all that stuff. Who do you feel was the one that got shot at the office, bitch? Who do you feel got shot? And and Annalise, did Annalise get shot? Annalise got, Annalise took fucking bullets for them too. They're so ungrateful. Anyway, let me get up off of here. Y'all, let's just discuss and I'll see y'all later. Peace.